Thank you everyone for joining. We really appreciate it. I'm Lauren Russell. I'm one of the two faculty directors here at the Fells Institute of Government, which is the University of Pennsylvania's public administration program. I also teach courses in the MPA program. I'm joined by my colleague, Marlon Lewis, and I'll allow him to introduce himself now as well. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Marlon Lewis. I am one of the assistant directors for the Fells uh, program. Um, I'm in charge of recruitment and student services. Nice to see you all today. So one thing that you'll learn about Fells in this presentation is we're a very personalized student-centered program. I always encourage students in class to be very active and participate. So Akila is going to invite you to be a panelist and that's just so if you would like to come off camera or you would like to ask a question live, you can certainly do so. Please do interrupt me. I'm happy to take questions as we go along, although we will also have time at the end for Q&A if you would prefer to do it that way. We also have the chat, and I think Marlon is going to be trying to monitor the chat as well. So if you would prefer to put a question there, that's one more way that you can ask your question. So our agenda for today is I'll give you a little bit of an introduction to the program. We'll talk about the different degrees that we offer as well as our non-degree program. I will cover scholarships and financial aid information, a little bit about the admissions process. And then as I previewed before, I wanna leave plenty of time at the end to answer all of your personalized questions. So I think to just set the stage, what sets Fells apart maybe from other public administration or public policy programs? We are an Ivy League degree program that's very small and personalized, but situated within the much larger UPenn universe. And so I really think that our program can provide the best of both worlds in terms of you're going to get a very rigorous analytical training and education. It's going to be a very personal experience and it's gonna be a very practically oriented experience. At the same time, you also have the larger University of Pennsylvania resources, other schools, other programs that you can also use to advance your professional goals. And so we'll get into more detail as we go through the information today on that. Given that this is a professional master's degree, I think it's important to start by showing you some information on what are the outcomes for students who complete our degree program. So on the slide here, we have the breakdown of alumni careers by sector. You can see that it's pretty split between government, the nonprofit or NGO world, consulting, and some students do go into the private sector. Although a lot of the students who are in the private sector are doing what I'd call maybe public sector adjacent work. If you go ahead and look at earnings and economic outcomes, our graduates are doing extremely well. So I'm actually an economist by training. My expertise is the economics of education. So I went ahead and pulled data that the US Department of Education releases on all degree programs and students who end up taking federal student loans are tracked in that data in terms of their earnings. And what you'll see is if you look at the most recent data that's available, Fells MPA and executive MPA graduates from our program, their median earnings are in the top 2% of MPA programs nationwide. Adjusted for inflation, the current average earnings is somewhere north of $80,000. So in terms of kind of looking at across the board in the US different MPA programs, our students are performing extremely well. 97% of the MPA class of 2022 were employed, working on political campaigns or continuing their education within six months of graduation. As I mentioned, Fells is a very tight-knit community within the University of Pennsylvania. The middle picture here is our main building on campus. And the reason that we're actually called the Fells Institute of Government is because there was a gentleman in the early 1900s named Samuel Fells, who was a very successful business person, but he became very concerned with corruption, particularly in local government, but just more generally. And so he really started Fells with the goal of training the next generation of change makers to be you know, very effective and ethical leaders. And we've really continued in that mission today. Our building actually is the place where he used to live. It was donated to the University of Pennsylvania for our program. And I think it's kind of emblematic that we have our offices. For example, you can see behind me, this is one of the old bedrooms in the home where I have my office. Our classroom is used to be a living space. And so kind of that 
homey feeling is, I think, emblematic of the program in general. We're, of course, located within the very vibrant city of Philadelphia. This is not only a great learning laboratory for students, but it's also a great place to live if you are going to be relocating to undertake your degree studies. I have lived in the city of Philadelphia now for going on five years. Marlon Lewis, who you heard from earlier, my colleague, also lives in Philadelphia. And so I think it's a great place really to be able to live and learn. What really makes Fell special are the people. And that will be the students that are in the program, that will be guests and speakers we bring in, but it'll also be a lot of experts and practitioners who are your instructors and professors. And if you go to our website, you can actually read bios about all of these different people here shown on the screen. At Fells, we really pride ourselves on having a diversity of different expertises, backgrounds, but one thing that all of these professors and instructors have in common is they're really invested in your success. And we've really cultivated relationships with all of these people so that they can play such a critical role in supporting your professional goals, whatever those may be. We also have an absolutely fantastic staff. You can see Marlon's picture on here. And we also have Mindy Zacharias, our director, Colleen, who's in charge of career services, Alberto, who is our program coordinator, and Michelle, who is in charge of communication and events. If you have the chance to interact with any of these people, you will know that they are really the heart and soul of the program. And they go a long way to making sure that your experience as a student would really be as great as it can be. Here's a little bit more information about our program. So we have a cohort model where if you're in the one year Masters of Public Administration program, you're essentially taking all of your classes, at least your core classes together with the same core group of people. And we call that your cohort. And you're moving through the program together. It's a similar thing with the executive MPA program, even if you're doing it on a part-time basis where you're entering with a certain group of people and then you're going through the core classes together. Our average cohort size is around 30. That's a very intentional decision. And that's because we really think that around 30 is the ideal size where you're able to get more of that individualized attention inside and outside of the classroom, while also being able to benefit and learn from your peers and all of the other people who are in that cohort. If it's much smaller, you don't necessarily have as many people to network and connect with. And then if it's much bigger, I think it's a little harder to keep that kind of more personalized touch of the program. So I personally really appreciate how we've kept these cohorts kind of at the ideal number. The MPA program, students there have an average age of 26. EMPA cohort, the average age is 34. However, there is a range. So within the MPA program, we might have people who are coming straight out of their undergraduate studies. We've also in the past had students in that program who had multiple decades of experience in the workforce. Similarly for the EMPA, there's definitely a range. Although as I'll discuss in a little bit, the executive MPA program does have a work requirement of at least five years of work experience. 27% of our students are identifying as an underrepresented minority student. 26% are identifying as first-generation college students, 8% are identifying as coming from a low-income background, and 14% of our students are international students. Next, I'll get into some details about the program. So we are an exclusively graduate-level program. We offer a one-year Master of Public Administration degree and then a two-year part-time executive Master of Public Administration degree. We also have a non-degree program option for any students who would like to enroll in a class or two and either because that's going to meet their needs or because they want to see how that goes before maybe committing to one of these full master's programs. So let me just compare the Master's of Public Administration with the Executive Master's of Public Administration. So the Master of Public Administration is a fully on-campus degree, and it's designed to deliver the analytical tools, real-world experience, and valuable connections that you will need to either begin or advance a career in the public sector. It's really designed for students who want to build those skills to make a bigger impact in government or the nonprofit world. The core classes are all in person. They're held on campus during the day. You may have the option of taking some electives in a hybrid format. The curriculum is nine classes, including a capstone project class and then two electives. And those two electives could be classes you take here at Fells 
or they could be at another Penn school or program as long as it's at the graduate level. Our students are also completing an internship as part of that, and we actually guarantee $5,000 of funding to every single student who is admitted to the MPA program, so that if they find an unpaid internship that's going to suit their professional goals, and you know the fact that it's unpaid would be a barrier, that you can then get that $5,000 of funding so that it essentially is turned into a paid internship for you. If you commit to this program on a full-time basis, you will complete it in one year. And we've done that fairly intentionally. So we know that undertaking a master's degree can be an expensive proposition. And so if the degree is gonna take two or three years, it's basically probably gonna be two or three times the cost. So we've worked really hard to make sure that each class is really packed with the most important skills, concepts, and information you need to be successful. And we've thought very intentionally about how students really can maximize what they're getting out of the program in that one year format. If you're a student who is thinking about maybe doing the degree part-time, that is an option. And typically students are taking two years if they're doing it part-time, which would be taking two classes a semester rather than four. The Executive Master of Public Administration program, by contrast, is a low residency program where you're not having to be on campus for every class, but instead it's kind of a blended format where some weeks you're meeting on Zoom, and then that's combined with what we call our executive weekends, where you're coming to campus and you're having in-person classes on Friday and Saturday of that week. And this is a nice blend where you're getting that in-person interaction elements, but you don't necessarily have to be living in Philadelphia to make this work. It's designed for experienced working professionals with at least five years of experience. And this is really for people who wanna take their careers to the next level. That could be maybe you're already working in some type of public sector occupation and you want to advance, you wanna get promoted. This program is designed for that. Or maybe you're working in the private sector and you want to pivot to something new, this program can also help you do that. As I mentioned, the core classes are held online on Monday evenings, and then we have our monthly intensive weekends, also known as our executive weekends, where you're in class from 9.30 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. on Friday and Saturday. This program requires 10 courses, including a capstone project course and three electives. Just like with our regular MPA program, those electives can be at FELS or those can be from another Penn school or department. And this program takes two years to complete on a part-time basis. And as I'll discuss when we lay out the curriculum, for this one, you take two classes each semester. So just to summarize, we'll get into a little more depth on the MPA program. The MPA is 12 month on campus, nine courses plus an internship. It has a required capstone project, just like the EMPA program. Typically students in this program have two to five years of work experience. Although if you have more, this is still a great program for you. So the way we've structured the curriculum is there are really three core theme areas where you're taking classes in the fall and spring that are aligned in building your skills in those areas. So one of the key areas is statistics and data science. We know that evidence-based policymaking is incredibly important, and so we want to make sure that you leave the program with skills to be able to assess evidence on various policies and programs and even create that evidence yourself, whether that's through data collection or program evaluations. Economics and finance is the next area, so it's very important that you can work with budgets, you can understand kind of the larger economic picture and what trade-offs there might be, and then finally leadership and policy. So it's you know, certainly great if you have all of the skills and knowledge to generate great solutions to society's most pressing problems. But if you can't mobilize people to get those solutions implemented, you're probably not going to be a very effective public sector leader. And so this sequence of courses is designed to give you the context and the skills to really make sure that you can amplify that impact. So how it's laid out is in the fall, you would take statistics, economics, and then public law and public process. Your fourth class would be an elective of your choice. And then you would start to think about your capstone. You would do a little bit of exploration and towards the end of the fall semester, you would be matched up with your client organization for that project. In the spring, you take classes that will build on each of those classes from the fall. So program evaluation and data analysis builds on what you learned in statistics. Public finance and public policy is going to build on some of the concepts you saw in economics, and then public management and leadership is going to build on what you learned about public law and public process. 
you would then take a second elective class of your choice and you would enroll in the first semester of your capstone experience. And that first semester is really focused on planning your project, conducting any necessary research and designing how you're gonna approach that project. This semester of the capstone class doesn't entail any course credit. And the reason we did that is we didn't want you to have to pay for another class. So it's essentially like you are getting a class for free with this semester of the capstone course. In the summer, most students will undertake an internship and they will enroll in the second semester of their capstone course so that they can finish up their project. And that's really focused on analysis and writing. And this semester does entail course credit. And let me reiterate, please do interrupt me as we're going through here with any questions. Diving a little bit more deeply into our executive MPA program. This is a 21 month program. So it's basically five semesters, fall, spring, summer, fall, and then you graduate that next spring. It's a hybrid low residency program where you're having some times when you're coming on campus and other times when you're having class on Zoom. It's 10 courses, it also requires a capstone project and it has this work experience requirement of at least five years. The curricular areas are the same for the EMPA program, although the courses are of course tailored to the executive MPA audience. And you're taking two classes per semester, not for like the full-time version of the MPA program. So in the fall, you would take quantitative methods for policy analysis and public management and leadership. In the spring, you would take economics and program evaluation. In the summer, you would take financial management of government and nonprofit organizations and public law and public process. You would also begin your exploration and matching for the capstone. Then when you have your second fall semester, you would take two elective courses of your choice. You would begin your capstone phases one and two, where you're planning, you're researching, designing. Just as I mentioned with the other MPA program, this one doesn't entail any course credit, so there's no tuition charge for it. And then your final semester would be your second spring, where you take a third elective class and you're enrolled in the final semester of your capstone course. Experiential learning is something that is very important to us at Fells, and how we think about that is we can't just keep the concepts and knowledge kind of in a vacuum in the classroom. We need to make sure that our students have the opportunity to apply all of these tools to the real world. And that's not only something that you do when you graduate, it's something you're doing throughout the program in a variety of ways. So for instance, our classes are very heavy on course projects. I'll give just one example. So I teach the program evaluation and data analysis class in the spring. And every year, the last six weeks of the class is we will take on real world clients and you will work in groups to produce deliverables for those clients based on what you have learned in the course to date. So last year we had as our clients, there was one nonprofit organization where they wanted students to analyze some data related to campus crime rates and kind of look through the trends and you know where should policy really be tailored to solve the crime areas that are kind of becoming more prevalent. We had several other students who were doing work related more to international development, where they were analyzing household survey data from various countries. We had another group that was analyzing a result from this innovative experiment in Colombia. And so those projects gave students a chance to see how you really put all of those tools and knowledge into practice in a way where you can see immediate impact. So one of the cool things that happened last year was one of those groups was working on some data analysis for an intervention in Zambia. And just as they were finishing up the draft of their results, actually the client was flying to that country in order to present that to the stakeholders. So this is one great thing about the projects is you're really able to see the impact that the work you're doing can have. I mentioned the internships before. So we offer that $5,000 of funding and guarantee that for every MPA student. And that's so that you can gain that experiential learning that you need. Finally, across both programs, we require a capstone project. And this is an individual project you're doing for a client. There are multiple ways you can identify your capstone. So you can propose your own capstone project, or you can select from our Fells Lab projects. What Fells Lab is, is our 
effort to do outreach to nonprofit organizations, government offices, and elected officials around the world. They will submit project proposals to us, and then we share those out with the students, and the students can select one of those to complete as their capstone project. This is great if you're not necessarily you know, quite sure what you want to do after FELS, you could maybe select a FELS lab project and then gain some experience in a particular area. Let me just give a few examples of some of our elective courses. So the courses that are listed on the left there are courses that we very regularly offer at the FELS Institute of Government. Things like negotiations, public communications, government relations, and so on. And then you're not limited to just classes within FELS, but you can take classes in the law school, the graduate school of education. Maybe you wanna take a class from the political science department. Maybe you wanna take a class from social policy and practice. So basically any graduate level class can count towards your elective requirement for the degree. We also offer concentrations as one additional way to customize your degree. Right now, our five different concentration areas are domestic policy, data analytics, nonprofit leadership, international affairs, and political advocacy. The concentration doesn't require you to take any additional classes. Instead, this is just based on the electives you take. So if you take two electives in the domestic policy area and then also complete your capstone related to domestic policy, you can earn that concentration. Now, we actually are launching a sixth concentration, which I think will probably be in effect next year, although it's not mentioned here in the slides because this is so new and recent, and that's going to be an international development. So that will bring our list of concentrations to six. If you would like to customize your degree further, you can actually pursue dual degree programs that we have already set up. And how this works is you basically double count classes towards two different master's degrees or the master's degree from FELS and say the JD degree from the law school. And so we have the dual degree programs here listed. These are also on our website if you want to take a look at those. If you are interested in pursuing a dual degree at Penn, I would encourage you to reach out to us and talk about that plan just so we can discuss, you know, how the courses would be laid out, which courses would double count, and how you would complete that dual degree setup. Finally, we do offer a non-degree program option. So this would allow you to explore some fellows courses without committing to one of those master's degree programs. You can enroll in any course that FELS has to offer as long as there's space and you're approved to register. And then if you later decide that you would like to enter the MPA or executive MPA program, you can transfer up to two courses that you took during that non-degree status time. Here at FELS, we're very cognizant of the fact that most people are undertaking this degree because they want to achieve certain professional goals. And so we have a pretty extensive career support programming that is helping you achieve that. So we have a very formal mentorship program where you would be matched with a mentor. And then we have various events throughout the year where you're meeting with that mentor. And then even in addition to those events, you're probably meeting with that person, you know, one-on-one -on -one outside. You can participate in one-on-one -on -one career advising with Colleen Bonner, our wonderful career advisor, who's the woman pictured here on this slide. And we have quite an extensive Fells alumni network. Because of our cohort model and the fact that we are such a kind of small personalized program, our alumni feel very connected to FELS, to their graduate school. And so they're always very willing to talk to FELS students, introduce them to other people in their sectors or their industries. They are great for giving advice. And so the alumni are, you know, yet one more resource you have in helping advancing those professional career goals. We also have a variety of networking events and other programming that goes along with the master's programs. We have our public policy and practice speaker series where we will bring a big name speaker to say campus and they will tell you a little bit about their professional journey and they will answer any questions you have. We have our racial equity and social justice conversation series. We have various policy and career talks oriented around different topics. We have executive leadership dialogues where there will be a lunch and we'll invite someone who's an executive leader. And it's a very you know, intimate atmosphere where you can get your questions answered, hear their stories, learn from their experiences. 
And then finally, for most of our executive weekends, we also have networking receptions that go along with it. So we do try to make sure that for those executive weekends when both the MPA and EMPA students are on campus, that you're kind of able to make the most of that time by having these opportunities to connect with those in your cohort, those in the other cohorts, and then other alumni and guests that we bring to campus. Obviously, undertaking a master's degree can be an expensive proposition, so I think it's important to talk about scholarships and financial aid that is available. So I mentioned the $5,000 of funding that's guaranteed for an internship during the summer for MPA students. That's what we call our public leadership and service fellowships. We also have a program where we will automatically guarantee $5,000 of scholarship if you have spent five years of service in the government. We call that our 15 for five scholarships. We have admissions partner scholarships, where if you've worked for someone on this list, we will guarantee you at least $10,000 of scholarship funding. And then if you don't fall into any of those two previous categories, you're eligible for our FELS Public Service Scholarship. And this is kind of general scholarship and financial aid funds that are available. The great thing about FELS is unlike maybe when you were an undergraduate student, you don't have to fill out a separate financial aid application. So we automatically consider you for all of the scholarships that are available just based on the regular application that you're already submitting. This slide lists out all of our admissions partners. These are also listed on our website if you want to refer to this later. In terms of application requirements, the application is fairly standard. It's an online application. You will submit a personal statement and essay. My advice for preparing the personal statement is to talk about essentially why this master's degree, why fails. So given the small cohort, we want to admit people who are committed to pursuing their professional goals that are going to add a lot to the cohort and who are also going to get a lot out of the program. So as much as you can be clear about why you're applying for this master's degree, that really can be a good thing to put in your personal statement. There's also an essay where you talk about a challenging situation you encountered or a challenge you overcame and kind of how you grappled with that situation. You'll submit your resume, transcripts, and then two letters of recommendation. These can be from people you know through work, for example, maybe your supervisor. This could also be someone you know from your academics, for example, maybe a former professor. We are test score optional. If you would like to submit GRE or LSAT scores, we will accept either of those. Application deadlines. So for both pro master's programs, if you apply by December 1st, you will get an application fee waiver. So you won't have to pay any application fee. So that I think is a great incentive to get your materials together and apply early if you're able to. If that isn't going to work for you, we do have our regular deadlines. So the MPA deadline is January 15th. The executive MPA deadline is April 15th. And then if you're potentially interested in the non-degree option, we have three cycles depending on what semester you're planning to start. And those are listed here. That's all of the pre-prepared material I had to share. I really wanted to make sure to leave enough time for your specific and individualized questions. So what I'll do right now is open up the Q&A. You can ask your question a variety of ways. You're welcome to become a panelist and unmute your microphone and ask your question live. You could put a question in the chat, or you can put a question in the Q&A, and I'll try to monitor all of those channels. So I am seeing one question already in the Q&A part of Zoom here. So the question was, could you share more about the AmeriCorps or CityCorps partnerships? What are the current parameters? So basically, if you have a history with those organizations, so you've worked for them, we guarantee that you will get a scholarship of at least $10,000. Now, it could possibly be more if you have other aspects of your application that are really strong and reasons that you might warrant a bigger award, but we that's kind of like the base amount that we guarantee because you've, you know, done good service with those partner organizations. Maxwell? Hi, uh, thank you for your presentation. Sorry. Um, so I am a current undergraduate. I know you mentioned that usually people coming to Fells have a couple years work experience so what are you looking for in those people that you do admit who are coming straight from their undergraduate degree? Yeah, so for people who are coming straight through, 
we like to see some evidence of commitment to public service. So that could be maybe internships you've done, could be volunteer work. Essentially, we wanna make sure that you know, you've given enough thought to your professional goals where this master's degree makes sense. We're also looking for someone who you know, academically can succeed in the program and has the maturity where you know, they're still gonna add a lot to the cohort even though they may not have that kind of formal full-time work experience yet. I can take the next one, Lauren. If I choose the non-degree option to get in during the spring semester, can I use those credits to pivot to the MPA or EMPA? Correct. So any non-degree courses that you take fully transfer into a degree option if you choose to continue forward after that. And in terms of the second part of this question, it seems like maybe you're also asking does it make sense if I could start in the spring to kind of start right away or should I just hold off until the fall? So I think that's going to kind of vary on a case by case basis. But given the cohort model, if it kind of makes sense for you to start kind of with the typical start date of the fall, I would say that's going to give you the most continuity in terms of moving through those classes together. So I'm seeing another question in the chat here. What's the difference between the EMPA and the GMPA program? So the GMPA, the global MPA at Penn is housed in a different program essentially. So we don't know as much about it because it's not one of our degree programs. My understanding is that the executive MPA program as we offer it, you know, it's much more domestic focused whereas the GMPA is global. I could be mistaken about this. So please look into the GMPA on your own. I think the GMPA also is probably exclusively online, whereas the EMPA is hybrid, where you are coming to campus and having those in-person interactions some of the time, and then you're online for some of the weeks. Yeah, I'm, I'm almost correct to just piggyback on what Lauren said. The GMPA is for international students that, um, that would be essentially looking into this space, but the EMPA is for, the EMPA is for domestic students only. So I'm seeing something in the chat. So just curious, when do applicants receive an admissions decision? So it varies a little bit between the MPA and EMPA program. And it also varies from year to year in terms of, you know, exactly how many applications we get and exactly how much time it takes us to review all of those applications. I would say generally for the MPA program, people are receiving decisions sometime in March. For the EMPA program, it will depend, are you applying by the December 1st fee waiver deadline? If that's the case, you might get a decision a little bit sooner, could even be January, February, or March. But if you're applying by the April 15th, typically you're finding out in April or May. So I see a question here in the Q&A from Michael. And Marlon, if you have any thoughts based on conversations with current students, you can chime in here too. So the question is, what things help students be prepared for courses? If a student is admitted, how could they best, quote, study up for the program? So one of the great things about FELS is that there are no official prerequisites. So we're designing the classes so that even if you've never studied these subjects before, you can still be successful and get up to speed very quickly. So I think that's one nice thing to note. For the MPA students that are coming and doing the fully on-campus program, we also have some sessions that we do as part of orientation that are doing like a little bit of math review, teaching you a little bit about R, which is the statistical coding program you're going to be using. And so some of that preparation is built in. Now, if you have additional concerns, you're always welcome to reach out to the professors and see if they have any readings or any other materials that they would recommend. Yeah, so I guess to piggyback on that, we do have math boot camp, but it's not a, it's not anything that's actually you know to be scared of. Math boot camp is a one week session where you will get a little debrief of what each class will be teaching you, so you can kind of be prepared. If again, if you are really nervous about a course, or if you see something on our website, you could reach out to me, um, or you can reach out to the Fells team. We could get you the information of that professor, so you can see what a previous syllabus looked like. Um, but as Lauren mentioned, it's not something that we want you guys to worry yourselves about. We feel like the math boot camp really puts everything in perspective and helps gear you guys up for, uh, for success.
Um, yes, so there is a question from Andrew. Can you all introduce me to some current or former MPA students? Um, yeah, so you can email the Fells. I'm going to send a link here soon, but you can email us. I can connect you with some alum. I can connect you with a few of our current students. If you are near the Philadelphia area, you can set up a tour. Um, you can come into the campus. I'll have students around the building who would be willing to talk to you about their experience as well. But I am going to send you the information so you can email me directly. I'm not seeing any more questions right now in the Q&A or the chat. So what I can do is Marlon and I can certainly stay online until maybe you want to ask a question in a smaller group. That's fine. So we'll stay on. If you don't have any more questions, I want to just thank you for being here today and for taking an interest in the MPA program. As Marlon mentioned, please do reach out to us with any questions as they arise. We're certainly happy to help. So I am seeing a few more questions now. Marlon, you want to take the first one? You're muted, Marlon. My apologies. What's your favorite non-academic thing about Fells? I would say the small cohorts. I think it really does allow for an interpersonal relationship, not only with the staff, um, but as Lauren mentioned, our networking nights are when we bring alumni back, we bring all of the cohorts together. So you do really build with the individuals that you're going to school with. Um, I would say that's probably my favorite thing, but that is a loaded question. Lauren might have a different uh, different answer for, for what is a favorite non-academic thing. Yeah, I mean, I would say I also just like being in Philadelphia. I know that's not really you, Penn or Fells, but I think it's just, you know, a fun city, great food, entertainment, you know, free activities around the city. So I just think it's a great place to live too, even in addition to maybe what you're doing at Penn. How many students are usually accepted? How many applications are received? So this varies year to year, um, but typically we are looking for about 30 students in each of our cohorts. So sometimes we fall short, we might only have 27. Sometimes we have 33, 34, but really we're looking at a target audience of a cohort of about 30 students. Um, application volume does vary, but um, I don't know, Lauren might have a little bit more data on that. I know that's with our, our partners in admissions who, who deal with that portion of it. Yeah, so I'm not sure if this is proprietary information or not, so hopefully I'm not going to get in trouble. I'll keep this very general. So I would say we're receiving somewhere around 400 applications a year. <laughs> 